Graham from Patrick and Poodles and today I'm going to show you three different ways to mend a vintage quilt. A lot of quilts that you'll find that are vintage that are for sale or maybe passed down through your family, they're not going to come in pristine condition. They're going to have some rips, some stains, some holes, but the great thing is you can actually mend those really easily to keep using that quilt. Vintage quilts have a lot of life left in them, and so with a few easy steps, we can keep using that quilt without worrying about making those holes bigger, which is really going to damage the quilt down the road. I'm going to show you three different patch methods. The first is what I like to call the quick and easy. It's not the prettiest patch, but it's functional. The second one that I'm going to show you is what I like to just call the patch. It's a way of putting a new piece of fabric over a hole to encase that hole so that you don't see it anymore, strengthen the area around the hole, and the great thing with the patch is if you do it right, it blends in with your quilt and it looks really, really subtle. The third one that I'm going to show you is what to do if you get a rip on the edge of your quilt. So I have my vintage quilt here and it's seen better days. So something to note is that it came to me really, really, really dirty and I put it through several OxyClean washes in my tub. The thing with a vintage quilt, if it has lots of rips like this one, don't put it in your washing machine. You're going to cause a lot more damage to that quilt uh, than is already here and it's going to be a lot harder to fix it down the road when you go to mend it. So the reason why is that your, your washing machine, it's going to work through agitation. A quilt when wet gets really heavy. So now you've got these stress points already here because that fabric's pulled away. Um, those seams are exposed. It's already a stress point for the quilt. And now you're going to give it even more stress through the heaviness of the quilt, through pulling of the washing machine. So I don't recommend washing the quilt until you've mended it. And that's where that quick and easy method comes in. It's a really fast way to get those, uh, all those holes encased and secured, and then you can go ahead and give it a more thorough wash. Let's talk about the quick and easy method. This quilt I mentioned came to me really dirty to the point that I didn't even want to touch it or handle it uh, before I, I put it through some sort of wash. So it got a nice soak in the tub. Now I feel comfortable touching it without being grossed out. Um, but I really want to throw it in the washing machine. And this is where that quick and easy patch comes in. It's going to be a way that I can secure all of these holes in this quilt, not add extra damage to it, and then get it washed right away. This then allows me to take more time afterwards uh, to maybe patch it the way I really want to, which is to match each of those squares with a really nice patch. Doing the quick and easy patch right away allows me to get that quilt in the wash, which is what I really want to do, and then I can spend my time really fixing it properly. To do the quick and easy method, cut a square that is half an inch wider and half an inch longer than your hole. Position the fabric over the hole and zigzag all the raw edges to secure them together. Alternatively, if you have a really long row of fabrics that are all damaged, you can use a longer strip of fabric that'll cover all of them and again zigzag all the way around to create that patch. The next method of mending is a patch. A patch is usually done in a similar fabric to the rest of the quilt. You can find vintage fabrics by looking at thrift stores or on eBay or Etsy. Or you can also search for new fabrics, which are reproduction fabrics of certain prints from the 30s and 40s eras. I'm using this fabric today because it has a mottled background, and to me it looked like a faded black fabric, almost like it had faded along with the rest of this quilt. The fabric that I'm going to replace is this one here, which was actually a black floral, and I liked the way that the black floral played with the rest of the fabric, so I decided to go along with that as well. If you're patching a hole that no longer has any batting, get a scrap piece of batting, cut it to size, and place it in there before you add your patch over the top. 
If you don't, you're actually going to feel that spot because it's very empty, right? It's all the way down to the backing. So you want to make sure that you're filling that hole up with some spare batting. To make a patch, you want to cut a square of fabric that is half an inch longer and half an inch wider than your hole that you want to patch. So I need to patch this entire square here. It's completely disappeared. I've cut a piece of fabric that will fit. I actually like to cut mine a little bit bigger than recommended. So this is a two inch by two inch square. I've cut my fabric three inches by three inches. This is going to allow me to have a little bit more wiggle room in that seam allowance uh, when I'm going to be sewing it all together. So position your fabric on top of the hole that you need to mend. Make sure that it's going to be covering the whole hole and that you're able to then stitch all the way around um, into the next seam allowances. So I want to make sure that I'm not too close to this raw edge, to this raw edge, etc. And I can tell even now that this patch is going to be a little small for this side here. And that's why I cut it a little bit bigger. Vintage quilts were not 100% perfect, right? And over time they've been washed and distorted. Having a slightly bigger patch means that when I get to this whole, this side here, I'm able to pull out that seam allowance and capture it properly without having to do a whole new patch or worrying that I'm going to be too short on my seam allowance of my patch. To stitch this down, you can do one of three sorts of stitches. You can do a ladder stitch, a whip stitch, or if your, your quilt was hand quilted like mine was, you could do a running stitch, hand quilting it to the top um, along with the batting and backing of the original quilt. Today I'm going to demonstrate the whip stitch. So I have a piece of thread already cut and ready on my needle. I have my thimble on my middle finger of my right hand and I've put a knot in the end. I'm going to slip this thread through all the layers coming out into the fabric of the adjacent, adjacent to the hole. I'm going to place my patch on top, lining it up again, making sure I have enough of that seam allowance covered. And a whip stitch, you're essentially going to go down into this fabric and back up in the fabric next to it. I'm try to lift it up so you can see a little bit better, making sure I'm lining it up where I want it, down into this fabric, up in the fabric next to it. I'm not worried too much if I'm catching um, the backing. I just want to make sure that I'm catching enough of those layers to secure it. Vintage fabrics tend to be maybe a little bit more delicate, so it's, a, it's fine if you're catching you know, more of the layers that you might want to. So that's a pretty big whip stitch. We can also take it down smaller where we're just catching the edge of our fabric and the edge of the fabric next to it. And when we do that, just catching a couple of those threads on each side, you'll notice that our stitches become much smaller, much less visible. The whip stitch is a little bit easier than the ladder stitch, but the ladder stitch is going to give you the most invisible look. So if you want a patch on top that you can't tell at all from first glance that it's actually a patch, you want to go with the ladder stitch. So you're going to want to go all the way around, finishing your patch, and continue on with all the other holes on your quilt, if your quilt has a lot of holes like mine does. The last sort of mending that we're going to show today is what to do if you have a rip on the edge of your quilt. So my quilt is a little bit unique in the sense that it doesn't have traditional binding. Um, it's just been whip stitched around all the edges together, um, but this will work if you have traditional bound quilt as well. So I have this big rip here. There's a couple things I could do with it. I could cut a patch and place it, you know, half on this side, fold it over half on the other side, and sew that, and that would secure it all together. But there's a different way that we can also mend this um, without having a patch. So I'm going to start with my needle. I'm using hot pink thread today so that hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, but you'd want to use a thread that would mend or meld into the piece that you are mending. So bring your thread up above the rip. And we're going to do a couple stitches horizontally um, just to help, help the fabric to not rip any further. 
once we've done that, we are going to take our thread and we are going to go from down and up on one side, okay. down and up on the other side, like a figure eight motion, down and up. down and up on the other side. At first, it's going to look a little crazy. You're going to wonder why I made you do this. You'll see in a second when it starts to come together. So the beginning might look a little bit messy. Um, stay with it. So you want to continue this keeping your stitches pretty loose till you reach the end of your quilt. And then you're gonna go back in and you're gonna tighten up those stitches. So I'm gonna take the back end of my needle and gently pull to tighten. You can also just pull and yank on your thread, but because this is a vintage quilt, and I get a little bit nervous about um, pulling some fabric that might be a little bit more delicate. We're going to go up this way. And you'll notice that as I pull, so that beginning maybe wasn't as great, but as we pull all those layers together, or those threads together, I mean, there we go. I've essentially knitted that back together. Right. So here maybe I'd go back in and I'd fix it a little bit. But if you keep your stitches close to each other, what you'll end up doing is essentially tying your quilt back together. Because you're going back down and up, you're going to end up securing that raw edge as well. And your stitches are visible on the back, so they're actually securing the back layer as well. So when you're stitching, you want to make sure that you, you can see here, maybe I needed to go a little bit further to make sure that I wasn't going to have um, a, a backing that would unravel eventually. But you can go this way, continuing down and up until you've stitched that whole thing back together. So that's three ways to mend a vintage quilt. Uh, if you liked this video, feel free to uh, like it below, comment, let me know if you have any questions, and please subscribe to my channel for more great content. Thanks for watching.